Hello, lovely internet strangers. In today's video, I'm going to be discussing another piece of publishing news, a piece of news that hits somewhat close to home for me. If you've been following my channel for a while, you'll know that when I started this channel, I was still working in the publishing industry, but I left a couple of years ago. I tried something else for a while, but ultimately ended up using the skills I developed in publishing to work for myself. However, although it's easier than working at an agency or a publisher that could fire me at any time, my line of work means I still need to be on good terms with people I used to know in the publishing industry as contacts. So I am still taking a risk having this channel and I'm definitely taking a risk talking about publishing topics because you never know what video is going to get traction or be seen by someone who knows someone who knows someone because that's how the publishing industry works. So I'm very careful to give out as little identifying information as possible about my time in publishing, but I'm going to share as much perspective as I can on this particular piece of news. So with that bit of introduction, let's get into it. As you can see on screen, I have a tweet from Colleen Ophelein. I do not know how to pronounce her name, so I hope I did not butcher it. The tweet reads, well, thanks Twitter and JD Lit Agency. I just got fired because I'm a Christian and a conservative. So what the hell is this all about? What happened? I will explain. I'm pulling up the tweet from Jesse Single because Jennifer DeChiara has now locked her Twitter, so you cannot see them there directly. Jesse Single has actually been following these issues in the publishing industry for a while. He's especially paid attention to the issues going on with YA Twitter. YA stands for young adult, for those of you who don't know. So this is the first tweet from Jennifer DeChiara, who is obviously the head of the agency at 9.04 a.m. on January 25th, 2021. The Jennifer DeChiara Literary Agency was distressed to discover this morning, January 25th, that one of our agents has been using the social media platforms Gab and Parler. Oh no, we do not condone this activity and we apologize to anyone who's been affected or offended by this. Oh, but Jennifer, don't you understand that being offended does affect them because the people that are offended by this are adult babies who can't regulate their emotions and need to involve everyone else in them so they can stay in a safe protective bubble where nothing will ever offend them. The second tweet posted a minute later says, the Jennifer Day Chiara Literary Agency has in the past and will continue to ensure a voice of unity, equality, and one that is on the side of social justice. Yes, I can tell that you are all about unity. If by unity you mean everyone must agree with me and then everything is okay. And then about 45 minutes later, she tweets the update. As of this morning, Colleen Ophelein is no longer an agent at the Jennifer De Chiara Literary Agency. We're done with this bitch. Gone. We took the trash out. Our reputation is fine now. Or is their reputation fine? You would think so. But if you think so, you have not met YA Twitter. Let me introduce you to YA Twitter. So because I'm an excellent Twitter stalker, I found this tweet from Beth Phelan, who is a middle grade and YA agent who often is vocal in these conversations. And she had replied to a tweet that no longer existed. So I went looking for the original tweet and I found it because I'm just that good. So she replied to a reply made to that original tweet by Jennifer De Chiara. So Shelley Romero is an assistant editor at Scholastic who from a quick Google search is Latina and a believer in the whole Latinx shit, which I still haven't made a video on. Just for those of you watching who don't know, I'm also Latina. So in case I need to present my creds to you, there you go. To criticize someone Latina, you must first be Latina apparently in this fucking modern age. So Shelly says to Jennifer, Jennifer, I would absolutely like to know why if this is on your agency's website, this was only discovered after women of color brought it to people's attention last night. It doesn't take much to connect exactly what one half of the nation she had meant. And then she has a screenshot from Colleen's agency bio where she had written, lastly, I enjoy working with authors who show social media savvy and who haven't alienated one half of the nation or the other with intolerance. So I'll get back to her bio in a second, but if we go back to the tweet from Beth, so she piled on saying, this is my question too. I'm glad action has been taken, but other agents at JDLA have been interacting with her on here with tweets like that and bios like this, and it's only now that something is being done? So it's not enough that action has been taken now. Why didn't you take action before? Why didn't you sniff her out? Why didn't you read between the lines of her bio and get rid of her? You sent her to the gulag, 
dialogue, but you didn't do it quickly enough. So let's look at her bio. Now, obviously they scrubbed her immediately from their website after the firing, but if you're covering these kinds of topics, the Wayback Machine is your best friend and we can still read her bio. So right off the bat, I can see that she definitely doesn't have the usual kind of background that I would expect from someone who is an agent, especially for primarily picture books, middle grade and young adult. She was an engineer in the Air Force, then she retired from the military, she lives in Alaska, she has a BS in chemical engineering and biotechnology, and another BS in German. She's a former 911 call taker and dispatcher for Alaska Troopers, and she says she has a soft spot for veterans and law enforcement families. And that soft spot is a no-no in the middle grade and YA side of publishing, because all of those people are far left, woke AF, they're definitely anti-police. So I thought that was interesting right off the bat. And then when I scroll down to what she's looking for, most of the bios of agents in this space are super virtue signaling and they tell you like 10 times that they're looking for diverse stories and diverse writers, please send their stuff, etc. Whereas her description just talks about the characters and the stories, the kinds of writing, the reactions that she likes to have to stories. And of course we have the offensive line about enjoying working with authors who show social media savvy and who haven't alienated one half of the nation or the other with intolerance. I'm curious what led her to put that line there, but I will say that those tweets that I just showed you, those people have a point. Having worked at an agency, I can tell you that you don't just get to throw up your own bio on the website with no one looking at it. You're probably not even the person updating the website. Agencies have reputations to uphold, so they pay attention to that stuff. The other agents at the agency are gonna read it because if you're new to the agency, they want to know what you're looking for at the bare minimum because they might get projects come across their desk, so to speak, that might be of interest to you. And so they know to pass it along. And so those tweets were right. They only did something about it when people called them out and publicly shamed them such that they would lose reputation points if they didn't fire her. I mean, I could be wrong about this. Most of the people at my agency had access to the website. So it's possible at some point she could have added this line to her bio and people might have already read the bio in the past and they wouldn't notice it. And if they didn't have some kind of admin who checked updates, people might not have noticed it. So it's possible. I just don't think that it's likely. But honestly, in this middle grade and YA toxic culture, your silence makes you complicit. So the fact that her description of what she's looking for doesn't include diverse stories is really enough to mark her out as WTF. Who do you think you are? Did we not give you the Kool-Aid that you were supposed to drink when you started agenting in this space? So my other question about the situation was how was she found out? Because if the reason that they fired her was for having profiles on Gab and Parlor, how would they know? Because for someone to inform on her, so to speak, they would have to admit to being on Gab or Parlor and the people in this space don't go on those sites. That's why she got fired. I thought maybe it was possible that there was some person that just had a account on there for the purposes of rooting out wrong thinkers and getting them fired. But it turns out that there's an anonymous Twitter account called YA Whispers, which only started up in October of last year. And Colleen had tweeted back in November about how she was posting on Parlor. I don't know how YA Whispers came across this tweet, but they found it and they brought it to the attention of the agency via Twitter. And that was that. I mean, they're anonymous. They could be a man, but let's be real. The majority of people that work in young adult publishing, whether as authors, agents, or editors are women. And I would say that 95% of the people who engage in this kind of behavior, the dragging, the calling out, the hunting people in the YA middle grade space are women. I would fall down on the ground shocked if this was a man. Regardless, this person tweeted back to Colleen after she tweeted about getting fired for being Christian and conservative and said, actually, it was the white supremacy and neo-Nazi thing, but go off. YA Twitter has its own lingo, a lot of which is kind of borrowed from what I can tell from the way black women usually speak to each other, especially in black feminist circles. So the whole attitude here is like, you weren't fired for being Christian and conservative. You were fired for something worse than that. So as to her actual profiles on Gavin Parlor, I can't investigate her Parlor profile because Parlor is dead for the moment, but we can look at her Gab profile. So let me show you the extremely offensive content that Colleen posted on Gab. I mean, how dare she tell people that she wants them to submit romance novels to her so she can possibly represent them and sell them to publishing houses. That's crazy. She doesn't describe herself in any way here as conservative, Christian, alt-right, anything. She lists the same thing she 
she lists elsewhere that she's an agent at Jennifer de Chiara, that she's also an author, she's retired from the US Air Force, she's an Irish dancer and an Alaskan. That's it. So it doesn't matter what you post on the sites, it's just you even being there. It's guilt by association. Now, I reached out to her personally to extend my regrets about what happened to her as someone who used to work in the industry and who underwent an intellectual journey that caused me to be fearful of getting fired. So the reason that I said at the beginning of this video that it struck a personal note with me is that this is exactly what I used to fear when I was still working in publishing, but I was going on my intellectual journey and I was seeing that everyone around me had the same opinions as each other and I was over here and thinking for yourself was okay, but you can't work here. So I never would have made an account on Gab or Parlor with my actual name. Obviously, I assumed the mantle of the eighth square and I made a Twitter account for the eighth square as an outlet, but I asked her in my email if she knew about the reputation of these sites and whether she was being brave by posting on there or whether she had no idea that this was a potential consequence of her actions. If she replies and if she's comfortable with me sharing any more information, I can give you guys an update. If not, I just wanted to talk about this incident as a way to tell anyone who's watching the fears that I had of being fired for having the wrong opinions, the wrong affiliations was extremely valid. And now I have an example of it happening pretty cut and dry. And also as a way to dip my toes into explaining to you guys about the cesspool that is YA Twitter. I'm showing you on screen another tweet from Beth Phelan where she notifies her followers that Kat Rosenfield had tweeted about this whole incident and she was giving her followers a heads up in case they wanted to make their profiles private or delete any of their tweets. And then she says, stay safe because Kat Rosenfield is a young adult author who wrote a really amazing piece, which you should read if you're interested in the topic. It's called The Toxic Drama on YA Twitter. It was a piece she wrote for Vulture in 2017. I will link it below. When I read that piece back in the day, I was like, I wish I wrote this piece. This conveys things to outsiders as well as you could possibly do. I think she's the only young adult author I've ever seen write anything, take any kind of stand about the toxic culture of YA Twitter. And even then she's an author. I've certainly never seen anyone from inside publishing talk about any of these issues. So I try to talk about them, even though I'm doing it semi-anonymously, showing my face, but not using my identity because the cancel culture is real. I was able to connect with someone who still works in the industry. The way I was able to connect with this person was that they sent an anonymous email to the host of a YouTube channel I follow. That email was shared in a video. Then I wrote to the host of the channel asking them to pass along my contact info to this anonymous publishing person. And then when they wrote to me, they expressed everything that I experienced while I was in publishing, the same fears, the same culture, the same incidents. I'm not trying to trivialize what happened in Soviet Russia when I make this reference, but the culture there is Soviet. It's not enough that under your public persona, you don't talk about any of your true opinions, that even potentially you spout these approved opinions that you don't agree with. That's not enough. If it's ever found out that in some private conversation somewhere or under some other pseudonym, you went against the approved opinions, you're done. And people are looking for that. They are looking to inform on the wrong thinkers. So that's why the only analogy that I can make that conveys what it feels like from the inside is a Soviet-like culture. Because you don't just get fired. They want to blacklist you generally. So I don't know what's going to happen with this agent. I've asked her, but having worked at an agency, I know that the breakups can be messy because whenever an agent leaves an agency for any reason, whether they just move on or they're fired, the clients have to decide whether to stay with the agency or to stay with the agent. And in this situation, it's middle grade and YA authors possibly. I mean, she was only an associate agent. I don't know how many clients she actually had. I don't know if she's been able to retain some clients and she's going to go independent or if she's going to try to attract the kind of clientele who doesn't mind that she would have profiles on Gap and Parlor, people who support free speech, whether they're conservatives, libertarians, people who have left the left, left the woke left, left feminism, etc. I don't know. So if I'm able at any point to give you guys any update on this situation, I will let you know. Otherwise, I hope you found my former insider perspective on this situation interesting. And I definitely have ideas about more publishing industry related videos that I would like to make. Like I mentioned at the end of my last video, I still want to make a series about the infamous Hugo Awards incident and the sci-fi fantasy side of publishing. But if there are any pieces of publishing news or general publishing related topics that you want me to cover, let me know. 
Anyway, that's it for now. If you liked this video, please give it a like. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe. And I hope to have more content for you very soon.